hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? Big Porky here, the voice of hardcore boxing. And I hope you've subscribed as well or I'll be coming to pay you a visit. Yeah. I'm Peter Fury and uh, don't forget to subscribe to Porky's Corner because I've been a helmet of the month and you need to listen to me. <laughs> yeah? So follow him, yeah? And get the fella some followers up for Christ's sake. He wears his hat on his sleeve, the good man was. So follow Porky's Corner, he says it as it is and uh, you know, I appreciate the helmet of the month, Russ. No problem. <laughs> no problem. Thank you very much. Hello all you hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? It's Big P here, and still, I'm, uh, I'm just going to give I'm just going to give Asif Valley a ring uh, No Asif, five year I met him through Big Ron Lyle Big Ron! Let's have a look a, AJ, Adam, Andrew, Andy Arco, Andy Patterson, Angie, Auntie Anne, Ash, Cars, Asif. Have a look. How are you doing, Asif? I'm good, Russ. How are you? I'm all right. Uh, I've been keeping a long time now, see? You know what it's like, you're just going to uh, carry on plugging away and be safe. Yeah. Can, which uh, is not a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's... Uh, what, what are you doing? Are you, are you stuck at home all the time then? Yeah, yeah, that's it. Just don't, I'm buying a bit of boxing and a bit of uh, hard work and uh, a bit of walking and... I'm back and run, and that's it. That's all you can do. We're doing a bit of running, Asif, yeah? It's what, sorry? We're doing a bit of running? Yeah, yeah, I've been running for a while. Um, so, I was uh, training for a Bolton Marathon, but that got cancelled. Oh, right. So, I've been cutting with that. Oh, that's interesting. That's interesting. So, what what are you doing with yourself nowadays? Because I heard that you might... Aren't you doing some sort of combat uh, tournament or something, sports? No, a couple of years ago, we started off uh, doing some combat tournaments and that's progressed into bare knuckle boxing and them lads are doing fine I had them guys set it up for a few shows and then they've moved on um, and obviously I've uh, I, I decided to come back into boxing and uh, got my first kid back up he had his first bout at York Club, Muhammad Ali uh, Is that the kid so who were in the, in the GB team? Yeah, the kid from the GB team, he had a long time getting his licence back and it's been a hard three years in getting his, uh, his licence, but eventually we got there and uh, um, we, got, we got the licence, I'm uh, advising him and I'm looking after him and managing him with, uh, with Francis Warren. Um, so, um, you and Francis, eh? <laughs> yeah, Francis, uh, yeah, Francis, but um, listen, uh, opportunities for boxers uh, are very limited so you have to uh, work with everybody and I've always said that whoever looks after the boxer the most and they're the one that's in the ring and they're the one that's going to get hurt they're the one that's going to commit the life to the sport so whoever pays the most they deserve it yeah he's uh, yeah he's got a good uh, amateur pedigree in money Mohammed's got a good amateur pedigree very, very, very good amateur pedigree excited about this kid because <clears throat> I, I sincerely believe we'll go a long long way in the sport unfortunately we had uh, six fights planned for this year straight after the first fight this um, this pandemic happened so uh, this virus kicked in and he's still taking over and he's still in good spirits and he's doing well 
um, just training himself. So once all this is over, we'll, we'll, we'll restart again. Yeah, uh, Dennis has been given a date, September 11th, so whether that happens, I don't know. <clears throat> You turning up with any fighters that are injured, are they? Saying they've sent Mick Whaler a letter regarding England amateur boxing. They're saying there's no shows while October. Dennis has got a date September 11th. So that's five months, six months, isn't it? I don't know what yeah. to think. Yeah, uh, and, 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 and think about it. We, the schools aren't going back till September. Yeah, I know that. That's 100% sure. That's 100% definite. Now, how are they going to phase that in? You know, big bulk of people. Nobody knows how it's going to happen. We take every day as it comes and we've got to carry on. Uh, but I sincerely hope that boxing starts up, sports starts up, but I really can't see it till back end of the year. Um, I'm, I'm, you know, in November, December, I'm, I'm hoping that they do it. And, and I'm also hoping that the promoters that are out there don't look after the big boys. The big boys have already banked the money. They've already got money in the bank. The, the, the small whole shows needs to start up quick. So yeah. please boxers that are learning the trade they need to start earning the money because obviously like I'm only using as Muhammad Ali as an example he's only had one fight and he's not gonna with his purse that he's earned for the year he's not gonna last a year out no and what worries me about these young fighters uh, a lot of fat young fighters they're not we aren't boxing they've got no direction have they and that's what they need to have they've, they've done it the young fighters have done it since they're Ten year old. With the sport, when they were eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve, and thirteen, and fourteen, and carry on with the trade, and then they go pro, and then they hit something like this, mentally, physically graded. So not just the the mental side of it, which is key to the sport. They've they've, they've got to keep focused, and they've got to try and not take the eye off the ball, as as they say, and try and be positive and. Um, Listen, British Board of Boxing Control need to help these guys. They pay the licenses. And um, I'm surprised that nothing's come out. I'm surprised that they did not send anything out to the boxers to turn around and say, listen, say you guys have had five, six, seven, eight fights. If you need support, we're here. If you're in financial distress, or we can get you uh, our, our, our um, and mentally and physically. If you, you know, British Board of Boxing Control, I've got people that work for them to try and help these kids out and I think they need to be that sporting straight away. Yeah, uh, I agree with you mate, and it's tough times isn't it for, obviously it's not tough times for your top, top guys, but they're like the top two and a half percent aren't they, the other 97 and a half percent are all going to be struggling yeah. aren't they? Um, there's a number of kids that were turning pro I've 
told him to hold back and they said, well, what do you want me to do? I said, well, he said, try to just go and start shelves. Just do whatever you can, just earn your money, earn your bread, put it in the bank, just make your way. Well, when all this is over, then you look at turning pro. I mean, I take inquiries all day, every day. Um, yeah. I only look at who I want to work with. <clears throat> I know uh, I don't want to work with too many boxers, but I've, this year I plan to work with six boxers and uh, I've put a hold on four on turning pro. Yeah, well, so they could stay in amateurs. So, uh, so uh, I, I just said, listen, learn your trade, carry on, carry on what you're doing. You're not gonna, you're gonna turn pro straight away because obviously there's nothing to do. But the money's not gonna be the same, and it's like anything else. They have to sell tickets to get on the the first rung of the ladder. Now, how many people are gonna go buy tickets? How many people are gonna start spending the money? Because people have been, you know, for five, six months not earning money. It's a long time. It's a long. You learn to adapt, but. You learn to live with what you've got, and, but you learn to say, well, what's important in life is going to a boxing or going to football or going to sport. Is that important anymore? No, it isn't. Living's important, isn't it? Exactly. Yeah. Uh, backing up a little bit then, uh, tell me how you first got into boxing, because didn't you, Amir Khan, uh, sign with you when he first turned pro? Yeah, that was, uh, that's going back a long time. That 16 years. In fact, in fairness, in 2003, I was speaking to all the promoters before I went to the Olympics. Yeah. Um, myself, Shah, and Mick Jelly was going around speaking to all of them. We went everywhere, all over the world. And uh, we had a number of offers on the table um, for a gold medal, a silver medal, and a bronze medal. So I'm sure you've, you've read about that yeah, in your yeah. autobiography. Um, but, um, uh, you know, uh, Exceptional kids like me come at a, a, a time which is right, and uh, you know they are exceptional. And, and now, th at that time, there wasn't many Asian kids in this sport, and uh, it was something new and something different. And, uh, a, a fan base that was that can be grown and that can be attracted to by 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 by, by this seventeen-year-old. And uh, when we did, when we did do the deal, we did go right. <laughs> this was. Uh, Dennis was the unfortunate one, he nearly, nearly signed it. You know, yeah, I mean, yeah. Um, but listen, it, it, you know, uh, I got the best possible deal that was out there. Uh, I did all the talking and I went out there and I, and I, and I worked with every promoter. I didn't, I didn't break any, any rules or anything. I went out there and used my best business uh, acronym in, in trying to get the best possible deal and that's how I started to learn the trade. And of course, Sam years and went, went on to earn 100 million, didn't he? <laughs> Any boxer that earns is good luck to him. Yeah, he's years. done well on it. He's done yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. And he's a nice kid in here, I see, isn't he? It's, it's, the, it's the worst, brutal, hardest, backstabbing, two faced, shit faced sport going. Yeah. It's not good. Uh, but he's done well, I'm here. And like I said, what has he beat? 11 world champions? He's, he's got a fantastic CV, hasn't he? He's got a great CV. Estimate the CV he's got, and they call him about his. Uh, you know, he's got phenomenal job. People don't understand. Um, you, you, you can get people that are going to hit harder. You're going to get people that are going to be better than him. And it's all about timing in yeah. boxing. Do you know the Canelo Alvarez that fought Amir Khan? If that had been. If Amir would have had a bit of time to go into that weight, it might have been. An, and he'd been a bit earlier in his career and all that. It might have been a different story because he was out boxing him, wasn't he? 100%. And you got to remember, uh, uh, from, from a business point of view, he's done phenomenally well oh. in boxing. Phenomenally well. From the boxing point of view, I wasn't the, the, the expert. I wasn't the decision maker. Now I'm not the person that advises boxers in who the trainer is or who, who they can have or who they can't have. All they can do is make your business decisions. I, I just make business decisions and I, ha I can have, give advice on who trainers are. I can give advice on who they, they should be looking at. I can give advice who's out there that good for the style, but that's all I can give. I don't make decisions on them. I don't make decisions on anything apart from getting the best possible deal for the boxer. And then whilst they're in camp, I ensure that they get the best possible camp going and I'll liaise with everything. I take all the rubbish away and I will liaise with everybody else and all that boxing needs to do is concentrate and do what's important that's in a contract 
that they're getting paid really well to do, and that's my job. Yeah. Yeah, you've done you you you've done well for him, and like I said, yeah, they've all all them boxers that have been with you have all learned, haven't they? Yeah. And it took a, a, a huge effect and for the last five years, this year was a great year. The back end of last year, they were making good strides stri- and making sure this year was going to be the, the comeback year uh, for me, but it wasn't to be, I knew you did this. You just got to carry on and take every day as it comes, but I've enjoyed the spot, I really have. Yeah, you know, I've, what I've noticed, obviously, I'm like 61 months into this little journey of mine, but... It's like a roller coaster, isn't it? Dennis always says to me, the landscape will change, so stop flying off the handle and getting revved up and that. And just because Dennis, you know what Dennis is like, he's a nice man, isn't he? No, it seems to bother him, does it? Never make enemies. You yeah. Never <laughs> make enemies, yeah. <laughs> you work with every promoter because that promoter will want that boxer and that promoter will pay more, so they don't go flying about you. Yeah. It's nothing to do with you. It's what you can do for that boxer. They won't like you yeah. because you're getting the best possible deal, but they should admire you for doing the best for that boxer. Yeah. Then, then when you hand them over to the promoter, I hope that a promoter does the same for the boxers. Yeah. They won't like other promoters, but they will do the best promoter, best possible for that boxer. And that's how it is. They won't like you at first because it's costing them more money. Like yeah. so. But then they won't like any other promoters because it's costing them more money or any T V or anybody else because they've got to get the best product for the boxer and that's the same acronym. If you do the best for you can for the person that's paying you, yeah. then your reward should be there. Yeah, that's good that. Uh I'm just gonna ask you what you think about these certain fights and who wins. Tyson Wilder free. Uh Tyson. Tyson. Billy Joe against Canelo. Interesting that one. Interesting, yeah, because we like Billy yeah. Joe, don't we? Yeah. As I, a boxer. I, 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 I like Billy Joe, but Billy Joe switched on. He's formidable. Yeah. He's unbeaten. He switched it. It depends. It all depends how serious. And, and, and fights like Canelo uh, I've got to be taken seriously. If Billy Joe is switched on that fight, he would win. Yeah. on points and if he's at a good camp and he's mentally strong he would win because yeah. he's got the capability of it but if he doesn't and he takes it lightly and he takes it and he gets wrapped up in the big Canelo fanfare then it would, it would be Canelo yeah because uh, Canelo's got everybody knows he's got the power oh god he, he, and he can take a punch and will Billy Joe get a fair shake in Vegas on Cinco de Mayo? Um, <clears throat> will he? Um, only if anybody's worked the Cinco de Mayo will understand how that, that wheel spins. He needs the right people around him to, to get the best for him, to ensure just what Tyson had in Germany. Yeah. So that's what he needs. Yeah. Uh, John Ryder against Callum Smith too. He's got all the tools, hasn't he, Callum, to beat Everything. Ryder, hasn't he? Everything. You think he just had a bad day that night? <clears throat> um, when you watched the fight, if you look at it, did you think he was the Callum Smith of, 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 of previous? No, no, he didn't look right, did he? Something had gone wrong. Now, that was uh, um, 
down to him to work that out. And he really has not come out and said, I've done this wrong. He just kept it close to his chest. Yeah, he's, he doesn't really, he's not a trash talker, Callum, is he likes to do it in ring, which is what I like at times, but uh, yeah. I think he's he's like a, how can you explain it, he's a big, he's a big super middle, isn't he, come on, he's a big uh, lad. He just wasn't, he just wasn't right on the night, and it just, uh, so, something just didn't fit in, and sometimes you get them nights, you get, you get that something's niggling a boxer back in the back and back, you don't know what happens in people's private lives, you don't know if something's happening. Yeah. And that could really bother him. I mean, listen, I can only talk in the experience when I was around the box and I've been. I mean, when I was around Amir, there was a lot going on around Amir. A lot going on. A hell of a lot. And we had to cocoon him. And, and we were like taking his phone, his phone, phones away and computers away at one stage because there was too much crap going on. And, and, and the staying awake and they're bored and they're, 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 they're they're on the phones and they're on the social I heard, media. I heard about that. I, I mean, we're uh, playing on it, it PlayStation or video games till 4am and that. Yeah, and, 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 and things like that. And we're like babysitting him and, and at times you had to get the trainer sleeping with him and you had to get his best friend sleeping with him. There was all sorts of stuff going on. So that night, Colin Smith, I just don't know. It just wasn't the Colin Smith that we all know. Yeah. I love the kid. Uh, beautiful boxer. Great style. And mixed his job, but for that night, I think there was something wrong there, and nobody knows it. And I still go for him. Yeah. Uh, what do you think to uh, Anthony Joshua Pulef? Do Pulef? Does it happen, or does Pulef take step aside? Uh, I think he takes step aside. Um, I think it's wise business to take a step aside for for, for Pulef right now. I don't think Anthony Joshua needs Pulef right now. Yeah. Do you think it'd be overkill from Eddie Earn if they put him in with Pulef? One fight too many against not top as opposition. I still think that um, he, he, he did well with going back from the Ruiz fight, and uh, I still think that to put him in, in, in to Pulef straight away, or even he aren't even, and everybody jumping up and down for Tyson to go in there. You know, listen, he's still lost. It was a, it was a bad loss. He's come back well, but he needs to be tested again in a, a fight that is meaningful, you know. And there are a couple of fights in the UK that he can, he can have, but the world, the world see won't have it because it doesn't make him the money, or they don't want to see it on the TV. Presents that if he's got, a, he's got a fight there. The bigger guys now, but Saudi didn't want it, did they? Paul left Joshua. Oh. Uh, again, that's, that's, that's well, that's just that's as what uh, Eddie Hearn said on IFL, he said uh, they, they want it in England, but yet he said he'd go out most money, is. so reading between lines, if Saudi come in with a mega offer, they would have gone, not, so obviously they haven't, have they? No, you're not going to get Saudi's making big offers now, that, 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 that Ruiz Joshua was a one-off situation, yeah. they wanted to show the world that we can do boxing, and uh, will they compete, uh, compete in that? Yeah, if there's a Floyd Mayer there. Yeah, if there's a Manny Pacquiao. Mm. Fury, uh, Joshua, yeah. What other fights can go over there that's going to give them the millions and millions where they can't make on their own turf? Yeah. Uh, what do you think about the Dillian White situation? Do you think that he should have had a world title by now? Or do you think that it's his own fault that he hasn't? No, no, I, 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 listen, I, I sincerely think he should have had a world title fight it's not his fault whatever's happened behind the scenes and whatever's happened with the testing and whatever's happened with the outcomes why should he and I'm just saying if this might be why should he get suffer why should he suffer it I know that whatever he's been dealt with has been very very tough and difficult by no fault of his own I was in the same position with Muhammad Ali Exactly the same position. Ali admitted what had gone on. Ali had um, uh, had um, uh, got his um, ban, but to turn him back, in, to turn from amateur to professional, it took another 12 months of waste where he could have been turned away within six to eight weeks, and that didn't happen. Yeah. That was no fault of the boxer. It was 
what circumstances you're going to put in front of him and you have to do this, you have to do that, you've got to follow this, you've got to follow that. And if you don't follow that criteria that the authorities are putting in front of you, then, then how can that boxer move forward? And probably the same situation is with Dylan White. He definitely gave him a chance, man. He's a great boxer, by the way. I still like him, I think. Switched on. Another guy switched on. You know, I wish uh, he had the chance against uh, against Joshua. I was working with him at uh, the Fury uh, Klitschko fight. And um, if he'd had stayed in the zone of boxing and gone into the Joshua fight, it would have beaten Joshua. 100%. Yeah. Yeah, Joshua got Dillian White at the right time, didn't he? Right time. Uh, he come back after a long layoff, didn't he? Only had a few fights. He had injury. He had an injury and he won't fit. Yeah. So, but like you said, timing, isn't it? All about timing in boxing. All about timing. Yeah. Uh, I'll just finish off on this one then, Asif. Uh, do you think Amir Khan will fight again? And if so, will it be Manny Pacquiao? Um, I don't know. Okay. So, I'm going to put a cat amongst the pigeons, yeah? Yeah. Um, and, uh, and I know you've not asked me the question, but I'm going to put it out there anyway. Yeah. Uh, should Amir Khan have fought Kelbrook? Yes. Yeah. Myself and Dennis were close in making that fight yeah. three years ago. Yeah. Yeah. At that time, at that time, uh, Terry didn't want to fight. He wanted a lot of money, and that. Uh, and when you you when when you demands for money is excessive, that means you don't want to fight. Yeah. Okay, and um, last year, contract was done, dusted, sorted. Again, it was not a Khan's fault. It was pulled out by Brookside. Yeah. I know because I did it, and I'm putting it out there now. Yeah. Amir Khan has got fed up with that fight. So what fights are out there for Khan? Pacquiao, Brooke. And if Mayweather wants to fight him, which I doubt, but if that fight wants to be that one fight wants to be there, those are the three interesting fights. So all this shouting from Kel Brook that Amir Khan's don't want to fight him is rubbish, then, isn't it? It's rubbish. It's rubbish. People should tell the truth. Yeah. It breaks down. It materialistically it breaks down because of of people not want to put the signature on the contracts. Mm. Then we could move forward to the who, who the promoter's going to be. The boxers need to agree first. Of course, Eddie will, will back uh, both Amir and, uh, and Kel. Yeah. But there was other opportunities out there for both the boxers to make more money. Yeah. And if they want to make more money, then agree the terms and move on. Um, but listen, will that fight happen? Kelbrook fight and Khan fight will never happen. Yeah, yeah, there's too, too much water under the bridge now, isn't there? <clears throat> too much water under the bridge, it's gone now. Khan uh, needs to move on, Brook needs to move on, Brook's looking at other options, Khan's looking at. Khan's not got many few options. If the Pacquiao fight's there and it's signed up, of course he's got to go for it. Yeah. He doesn't need any more fights. He's a father of three beautiful kids. He you want them. You know, he's 33 now. Going to be 34 in December. It's not going, it's not going to be any, little be any, literally no boxing with big fights this year. Uh, this, that's the way I see it. I can't see it happening. He might have opportunities in Saudi, and I think he should, he should, if there's opportunity, and they're paying well, and they will pay well because yeah. don't, don't take it the wrong way. He's a Muslim in a Muslim country, and if they're going to pay him well um, in Saudi and, 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 and take the little fights, then. Maybe so, bank the money. I always say bank the money and put it in your bank and, and then uh, when it's the right time to go. I, I, I would still like him to see a one one uh, one fight back in the UK just so it's his retirement package. Do you know if I may car had a had a had a one last fight? It, and it, obviously it'd be pay-per-view wouldn't it on Sky uh, would Amir prefer the fight to be at Bolton against somebody like Manny Pacquiao rather than Kelbrook than Kelbrook let me put it this other way Amir Khan would have
does the boxing of sport want to give him that pay-per-view fight to say thank you very much? Too many haters out there will say no. Yeah. Boxing fans will say, listen, he's done well for the service. He's done well for the boxing sport. And he deserves it. Yeah. And if the, 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 the boxers um, that have deserved it in the past that recently retired um, have, have, have had the pay-per-view fanfare and, and deserved the retirement package, then why can't I be a can of that? Yeah, I suppose, yeah, I mean... There's... I'm, all, I'm all living in, it, it could, no, it's not, listen, it could be any boxer. Any boxer that has done well for the service of sport and the promoter and the box office or Sky or, or, or BT want to give that boxer the opportunity to end their career on a high because they've done so well in the, in the sport of boxing, then why not? Yeah. If the fans want to pay for it, it's their choice. If they want to go to it, it's their choice. If it becomes uh, um, uh, uh, where, 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 where it's like a, where, where, box, uh, where footballers retire and they go and say goodbye to their footballer, it's their choice. Yeah. Uh, a testimony. That's the that's the that's the word I was looking for. If it becomes a testimony, well, why not? Yeah. And there's good boxers out there that deserves testimonials. Yeah, I mean, Crawler got a testimonial, didn't he? Did, don't tell me about you did. Yeah, yeah, so there's nothing wrong with uh, giving testimonials to, to, to the boxers that have done well. I thought Crawler lost his fight, we got the decision, and obviously Tony Bellew, I never had him down to beat Usyk, but Tony Bellew achieved phenomenal success with four pay-per-views, didn't he? Yeah, I mean, I saw an interview with him, uh, he's a great kid, lovely, I mean, he's always been, a, I've always liked Tony, and he's, a, he's very respectful, but you can see, after boxing, okay, after boxing, what support is there from these boxers who've, who've been to the dizzy heights of all over the world, what support is there to, you know, to me, they're the next generation of the British Board of Boxing Control, they're the ones that should be being brought into the game to say, listen, we'll hand it over to you guys, there's some very good boxers that have retired, and they should be the ones that should be taking the boxing forward. You mean ex-boxers working at the Boxing Board of Control? Yeah, like they get involved in it, they're still involved in the boxing. You Instead of the, the same the old... Side. Yeah. yeah. I, I'd like to see people like, you know, Robbie Reed. Uh, I'd like to see him involved uh, doing a border control role instead of the same old faces. And we know who they are, it's an old boys club, you know, it's, it's just, they're old men in the 70s that are running boxing and they're not moving with times and it really gets my back up. young people are coming through but you do, you do need to you know you do need to have it's like <clears throat> again I'll use a footballer a, a good prolific footballer who's done well in the sport will move into management and then we'll move, move into um, uh, uh, maybe working with the FA yeah. you know uh, or, or running uh, you know and that's what we need to do we need to move these yeah. great credible names the big names into boxing moving into some form of a role with the association that they paid hundreds of thousand pounds to as fees to say take them on as a, a on a role you got to move with the times you, you, you get you get that no you get people upstairs in boxing you get people upstairs in football you get people upstairs in cricket advising yeah use their knowledge use them and keep them involved and yeah. you've got to move with the times now you've got to move with how the business is yeah. Because how long is this going to last for, Russ? I know, yeah. It's how long before we hit that and everybody pulls out and says, ah, oh, you know, you're back to the one or two channels that are supporting. Boxing, yeah. And I, I agree with that. And I, I, I want to see boxing evolve, but I think there's too many people got the snouts in the trough and it's, I'm all right, Jack. It's a sense of entitlement. Right, we see it at after parties every show. They've all got a sense of entitlement and it's all got to change in my opinion. And now we're hoping to call a few of them out on this channel, but none of them boxing board of control want to come on here because they know that I'd ask them proper questions. They don't, they don't seem to ask questions, answer questions at shows. The referees can't speak, it's like Howard Foster. 
He lives near me. I said, Howard, I want you on the channel. He's like, I can't, I can't while I'm doing this refing job. I said, well, how are we going to get to know about certain things? He said, you're going to have to read my book when I retire. <laughs> so that's, that's it, isn't it? So he, he can't listen, come on, do you know what I mean? Listen, I think, um, listen, British Power Boxing Control are, are, are credible in what they do all over the world, but they are, should also give the opportunities to come out and, you know, I'd love to see, I'd love to see behind the scenes of, um, of, of a board meeting. Or, I would, I would, because I've been on I'd one. Love see, <laughs> I'd love to see cameras follow them or, or whoever. You know, Google to go around and see this is where this office or this is where instead of the usual gym and this uh, manager or whatever, you know, let's look at the wider thing. You do it with the promoters, you do it with Frank, and you do it with with, with Eddie and you, 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 you know, Arams and the Oscars. They've all done the behind the scenes. What's wrong with the associations that run the damn thing? Yeah. Let's look at what the role is and let's look what 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 you do. What what what? How hard work it is, and no doubt about it, it is hard work. Yeah, no doubt yeah. about it, but tell the story. Yeah, I, I'd story like to see the, that. The midnight calls you get in because of fights falling out on a Friday night and it's live on TV. For, you know, and I've been there because I've spoken to the British Board of Boxing Control when fights are falling out late and what can we do and how can you help and so on. And, and they do help, but tell your story and, and you know, um, and and get out there and, and say it's not it's not a hard job, but they get knocked back. But tell your story. It's, it's it's good TV. Yeah, yeah, it is good TV, and I, that that's why I'd like to see. I'd like to see some of them from board come out and say, well, this this happened, that happened, and we're going to do this, we're going to do that. But no, it seems to happen. But that's a good idea. That a board meeting, because when I went on mine, right, the, he come up to me that guy Les Potts and he had he had a file with my picture on from when I had flat top in 90s early 90s I thought he's got a picture of me I never sent him a picture with with check and then I thought I've gone in there and he's gone uh, have you got a criminal record Russell I've gone well yeah like he's gone what for I've gone well nothing worth bragging about then I thought well, he's got it all in front of him so what's he asking me for do you know what I mean it's like it's like when Peter Fury went in for his license it, you up against it straight away. They said to Peter, "Do you still knock around where you make some old neighbourhood neighbourhood?" Peter's like, "Well, you know what happened, don't you?" But point I'm trying to make is, if your face don't fit, you're knackered, aren't you? Well, listen. I mean, uh, I think I don't hold a license, but um, listen, boxers will move away, and and get the license from elsewhere, and they don't need to pay what they need to pay. It's yeah. cheaper getting getting it elsewhere, so you've got to be careful. These associations that are out there um, work with the boxers, work with the managers, work with everybody, and it's it's hard for them as well. But people get fed up. How many boxers have gone and got a different license from elsewhere and mm. pay fifty euros just to compete abroad? Yeah, you can get one from Luxembourg, can't you, or Ireland, or anywhere. You know, wherever you can go to, and we, we know it happens. So why not work with people? It's too late in the day to have enemies and when the law spent they, they spent after seven or ten years on certain criminal activities that happened in the past when the law says spent and they should give that person a second chance who yeah. are the associations to say no because you've got a criminal record you can't do that yeah you know yeah. the law is the law and then if you're above the law then say so but people do. Look at Peter Fury. Let me give you as an example. And I'm sure he won't mind me saying this. Yeah, yeah. Genuinely, genuinely one of the nicest guys in boxing. Yeah. Sport. Done really well. Um, 15 years ago, he decided to, to reach out to God and go to Christianity and go in a big way. That was only when his own mind turns around and says I want to do something and reconnect with my faith and after once you reconnect with your faith and then you say well, I don't want to do this line of work I don't want to do this I don't want to do I want to do something good for the good and, and, and look where he is now yeah he's in a good place one of the most respected it? boxing trainers in the world yeah and if you can't use Peter as an example who else can you use you know, you've got to look at these good guys that come out of boxing, come out, out of the rough end of whatever they've been doing and going into something good. You've got 
support that. And these are the kind of guys that need more support, more help. They don't need any more blocks in front of them. They've had that all their lives. They've seen it all. They need the doors opening and saying, yeah, well, I'm going to do this because I want to put so much back into the community. And that's, that's, that's the way I say that we should move we should move with the times because boxing's moved with the times. You've got a lot of Asian kids in, you've got a lot of kids with mixed, mixed nationality, you've got a lot of kids coming in. Gang culture is still out there, knives are still out there, guns are still out there. But if you want to use the sport, use it wisely, get them off the streets and let the leaders of the gun clubs and the leaders of the knife clubs and the leaders of the, 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 the crimes that they're doing come into the sport still become a leader but learn the traders boxing and utilize that and help the kids in the community and they can help their profession and get involved in a sport which is good for them mentally and physically and they move all these kids into good sport that's the way i see it yeah open up the clubs open up the support every boxing club in the uk needs to be supported by the government they don't do it local authorities don't do it kids have got to pay themselves the clubs have got to support themselves they don't do it don't Look at the look at the way that it's changing. Yeah. Do you think that the councils in areas are not putting funding up for boxing clubs? Enough 100%, 100%. funding. Hundred percent. The 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 associations and the council uh, aren't getting enough money to to put it back into the kids of these days. The kids of these days. Uh, and, and that cycle will turn, that will turn. Um, back in the 80s, they funded the, the youth club, they funded child cares, and they funded in the 90s, they were doing it all, and then they withdrew the money because it was costing too much money. It's phenomenal, yeah, as I find it underwhelming when there's a pandemic like this, billions and billions of pounds get being thrown at different industries, which is great, fantastic help, yeah? But remember the grassroots stuff. Remember the kids. They're the ones that need it moving forward. How many youth clubs have you got in your area now, Russ? Uh, one. You know, I I used to be. I I am a I am a educated and worked in the youth committee for most of my life. And I was a, I was involved in crime. I was involved in in, in, in violence and, and everything else. And I turned my life out when I went into that youth club. When I when I started doing stuff and I saw the good, saw the good. Now my success story myself. And when I tell my story to the kids, I, you, there's only two roads: the right road and the wrong. When I was on the wrong road, I was ending up in jail. When I was on the right road, I was doing so much good. I felt good myself, and I wanted the qualifications. Yeah. And I wanted to do everything else. That's because there were 20 to 25 youth clubs in Bowen. Now you can count on two fingers. How many there is? How, long, how much jail did you get, Asif? Uh, that, that, you can read that in my book. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> did, wait, wait, you didn't like it then? <laughs> Listen, it's a, it's a curb, it's a, it's a deterrent. It's, it, at that time of my life, that made me the man I am today. Yeah. Because you could have gone that wrong path all the way. I won't be here. I'll be dead. Yeah. Be here, be dead. Um, you know, you could have gone all the way to to the wrong criminality life, and uh, I'm ever so grateful to this to the to the youth worker that connected with me, and uh, and then I, and, and, and I changed. Well, I would never have found a man card if I didn't work at a youth club. Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't found these footballers I advise on if I didn't work at a youth club. The sports I've been involved in, I would be in all over the world if I hadn't gone into. Club, and that's the reality of life. You know, you're lucky at times. You, you hit the right, right, right road, and you carry on with that road. Yeah, yeah, that's that's good. That uh, that's brilliant. So, moving on, then, you think that Amir Khan's just going to have one more fight? I would like him if I if two fights because these long layoffs are no good for anybody for health reasons. No. They have to have a warm-up to feel the way. And he's had a few warm-ups. Believe yeah. me, the second fight has never materialised for whatever reasons after the warm And that's through no fault of his own. It's just happened. And that's yeah. life. So if he does a warm-up and then goes for it, if he goes straight into a, a, uh, a Pacquiao, then um, <clears throat> that 
that's his, that's his, uh, that's it. I shouldn't have any more. Yeah. Win, lose, or draw. You've got to go into it. If I win, I've, I've retired. And that's it. Yeah. If so, I lose, I've retired. If I've drawn, I've retired. You've got to go in with that mind of, uh, of, of having that opportunity for one last time. Put it all on the line. Clean your ass off. Um, get the boss, best possible people around you. And just go for it. Now, they might make a change of mind if they win, but listen, that's the way I would do it. And that would be, if you want to be a legend in sport, you'd go off at the top. Yeah. Would you say it's safe to say then that Kel Brook didn't want to fight Amir Khan, but he's been shouting out that he does want to fight him and blah blah blah? Both of them, both of them are shouting out each other. The contracts were there for signature less than eight months ago. One side had signed. That was Amir. When we were waiting for uh, Kel, Kel to get it signed. They went so, off and did something, then, then the, the people that were putting the money up pulled it because the probability they used that contract to try and get more money from the other party and uh, it never materialised and that was it. So, so, bas that. so basically then, why isn't anybody asking Kel Brook about this? Because they're not putting this out there from know. Kel's side, are they? Because I know. Yeah. Because I'm the one that done it. Yeah. Yeah, so fans are being led a merry dance then by their side, then not by Kel Brook's team. Yeah, and I mean, you can't keep shouting him because they're never going to sign. It's never going to happen. Yeah. I've had, it, I've had two opportunities, two bites at the cherry. It's never going to happen. You had one bite in when, when it was Amir's birthday, round about when Dennis's dad died, wasn't it? Do you remember when you went out to see yeah. him in Dubai with Dennis? Then you went to Los Angeles, then Vegas to sort it, didn't you? And then, and then London, when it Joshua's gym opening, yeah. you and Dennis went to see Eddie and sort it out down there. All that chasing about, all that expense, and it's still, you know, if that were me, I'd be, I'd be screaming. No, but it's not Eddie. Eddie, Eddie was sat in a meeting. Yeah, Eddie wanted it, didn't he, Eddie? Yeah. Eddie was sat in a meeting at Bolt Wonders, and uh, it wasn't Eddie that said no. The, the person that said no at that time was Terry. Yeah. It was a Eddie. Uh, you can't knock Eddie out for it because he's protecting his boxer. So basically, uh, Kel Brook's been badly advised. I mean, he took Golovkin fight, didn't he? Two weight divisions. Well, that's down to... The, the, it's not Eddie that makes the decision who fights who. It's down to the boxer. Yeah. It's down to what's in front of him. If the boxer wants to fight him, go ahead and fight him. If the money's there, go ahead and fight him. What's Eddie going to do? Yeah. He's got, if, the, if the boxer turns around and says, I want that fight, then go and get it. And if he's got it and done it, you've got to be fair in this. I, I won't, I won't knock up any promoter back. Uh, who, who, who's, I'm not, uh, you know, the promoters will probably don't like me for saying it, but the promoters do a good job for the boxer. And if the boxer, if the, if the boxer wants something, he's put in front of him and the money's right. They'll go and do it. It's their choice. For me, Cam wants to fight Floyd Mayweather or Manny Pacquiao for the same amount of money. It's his choice. Yeah. The opportunity's been put in front of him, or he can fight for nobody. For the money, it's his choice. Yeah. <clears throat> you can't, you can't knock the promoters back. You can't knock the, the Franks and the Eddies or the Oscars or the Arams. They only put the opportunities in front of them. Now, an advisor like me will look at them opportunities, and we can have a chat with the the boxer and have a look. But then again, I'm not going to say, yeah, that's more money. Go and fight that. Yeah. It's the boxer's choice again. Yeah. It's their choice, and and that the the, the 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 boxing sport is crap. When you've got to make choices like that. Yeah. You know, you're not. You, these are professional boxers with professional solicitors and lawyers who are managers as well, advising them. Yeah. Not the people. That have been involved in the sport, but other people yeah. advising them. You know, and, I, and I, I'm going to say this because, again, I'm not associated with anybody. Lawyers are lawyers. Become a lawyer, you're not manager, you don't know enough about the sport. And I've seen it over the years. They're the only ones who get rich. <clears throat> they get paid handsomely. So it's not, you know, and I feel, and I feel for. 
for promoters that are dealing with two or three lawyers of various size because you've got to balance balance it all out and get the best possible and sometimes you've got to be like that that's it that's it you either take that or walk away and that's what promoters will do yeah what do you expect them to do yeah yeah can't laugh around there's no, there's no more of a good handshake these days them days have gone yeah yeah Dennis will have that Eddie will have that Frank will have that all the managers who's got licences they'll have that dealing with lawyers dealing with boxers dealing with trainers but it's the hardest sport going it's just shit sport to be involved in but it's exciting and it's demanding and there's twists and turns and there's a lot of ifs and buts and there's a lot of goodness that comes out of it great stories yeah <laughs> so that's why you're involved in it this is why we live this sport so much, Johnny! Rough, tough, rugged! <laughs> uh, that's it, you know what you make. Uh, uh, listen, I hope, I wish all the boxers that are out there, yeah. especially the small whole show guys who've not got contracts, who've not got promotional deals, who've not got people out, out there, they, they really need the support. And I sincerely hope the British Sport of Boxing and other associations that are out there come out and say that they, these boxers will be struggling to put food on the table right now as we speak. You know, Kieran Farrell's got loads of them and other small horse promoters that are out there have got Laura, John, Johnny Ingo, uh, 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 Johnny uh, from Preston, he's got loads of them and everybody locally that I know, you know, Steve Woods, yeah, everybody locally I know, they're probably putting there to be phone calls right now. Dennis and When's the next show? Can I get on it? Can I get on it? And these and the Franks, everybody's taking the phone calls. When's the next show? I need, I need money, I need money, I need money. How are these boxers going to survive, man? Yeah. Yeah. Let's finish off then. Uh... You know, you know how, you know how, the, let, me, let me just say this, you know how the, uh, the governments have given the support to um, everybody out there, businesses out there, all these boxers here, yeah. look at that as a sport, man. There's thousands of boxes in the UK. How many have we got uh, registered? 10, 12,000? Yeah. Yeah. Out of them, there's only a small percentage, yeah. The rest of them, they need support. Let's 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 see what we can do from I, I can't do anything because I ain't got no money or power, but it can, can somebody help them out. Maybe the association can go to go and get, get a loan and, you know, if they can get the three, 4,000 to get them um, past the next few months. At least they've got food on the table. Yeah. Uh, I agree there. Let's finish off well, then. Let's, what, let's wish him all the best. Yeah. Um, what do you think? Before, yeah, before you go, uh, what do you think next for Yui, Fury? Uh, another lovely, lovely kid. Um, did well at the last fight. Um, I would love, and now you've touched on that, I would love to see it with Joshua. Would you? That's the UK fight I was inclining at. Yeah, Anthony Joshua, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you always got sublime skills. He just seems to have bad luck, doesn't he? Yeah, but given the opportunity, it's a good UK yeah. fight. It's not, that's what I'm saying to you. It's not a world level fight where the world would, would be interested. But for something for the UK Brits to be interested in. Let him have a bash. Yeah. Let him yeah. have a bash. He's not up to that. He's had a lot of bad luck. Has he got the opportunity? Has he got the capability? I've known him since he was a kid. Yeah. Give him a chance. Yeah. Yeah, brilliant. I know he's not. I don't, I don't, I don't think he's ranked up or in there, but for a warm-up fight or for a voluntary, what's wrong with it? Yeah. Yeah, it's possible, isn't it? That, I'd like to see him in with Joshua. I like you and me. Obviously, I get on with his dad well, and and you. He don't really say much. You. I've been in his company. Spent a lot of time in his company. He's very quiet, but uh, yeah. he's usually training or on his on his uh, phone. But I, he, he's a lovely I kid. I still say the Parker fight. I still say I he won. I still, I still say he won. So give him the opportunity. And I'm only being a realist here. I'd love to see that fight. 
Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with that, having a fight for, for that after this. So I'll just set it up. They, they don't, they've got the same promoter. It might happen, might not, but I don't know. It's down to the promoter, the boxers themselves. That'll fill. That'll fill MEN. No problem. O2, no problem. Good fight for Joshua to be in the UK. No problem, because that's what we want as British boxing fans. We want to see him. Give him the opportunity. Yeah. Yeah, that's brilliant. All right then. Well, listen. It's been a pleasure, Asif. As always, hope you're well and your family. I hope you're self isolating or whatever they call it, staying indoors. Apart from when you're running. <laughs> no, it's been a nice, uh, nice chat in the back garden. So uh, nice and quiet. So I've had my cup of tea. So go for my bagel. Not no fasting yet. Fast starts tomorrow. So, uh, which is Saturday. What's that, Ramadan? Yeah, Ramadan starts for all the Muslim boxers, so I suppose uh, um, just wish them all the best as well and uh, for fasting and for Ramadan and for Eid coming up. It's a very, very tough time for them all. It's uh, different scenarios. There's no going to the mosques, uh, no going to uh, be, being a spiritualist as you can be. You've got to do it in your own home, but we've had three, four weeks of getting used to it at home. So um, You've been getting prayer mats out to all my safe. Well, the prayer mats are always out at home, but it's when you go to the church, you get that, uh, the mosque or the church, you get that different feeling, you know. Yeah. I don't know if you are religious, but when you go into yeah. a mosque or a church or a synagogue or wherever you go to, wherever your faith leads you to, it's different. You you, you feel a part of the surroundings, the part, yeah. part of the, the sermon that's going ahead and you're listening, you're taking in more and you feel, you feel relaxed and relieved when you come out and you, you've done good and you feel you know you have your connection with your your god and you feel good when you come out you can't even do that during the ramadan and churches and today everybody's the same so it must be hard out there when you follow it all your life it's got to be hard so you know uh, we've just got to deal with the best yeah all right then well listen all the best and you take care and uh, thank you for coming on parker's corner and hope to see you soon it was a pleasure and uh, be safe be good and uh, let me wish everybody out there the best um, uh, and hopefully um, we're back to normal the sooner the better but uh, most importantly be safe alright then you take care mate take care God bless bye you bye Thanks. bye bye that was uh, Asi Valley uh, Amir Khan's advisor for the last was it 17 year so that's about it so I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, I'm going to jazz it up a bit now and we're going to do something special with it. Alright, so peace out, keep on trucking, keep supporting boxing. Shout out to Ryan Rhodes and Steffi, I hope you're well. <laughs> ooh, ooh. <laughs> you like that one, didn't you? Right, first of all, I just want to say thank you very much for liking and subscribing. It means a lot to me. Because uh, we're on this journey together, aren't we? So, anybody got any ideas for the channel, fire them over to me. PokyCorner at mail.com. Alright? Shout out to Innovation Alloys and South Yorkshire Packaging. Alright? Don't forget to subscribe, keep on trucking. <laughs>